So let's go back a little bit because you haven't always had all this under one roof, right? And so when you first probably started recommending hormones to people balancing progesterone and what have you, um, folks that weren't addressing the lifestyle factors, the stress reduction, sleep improvement, diet, and so forth, um, how effective, I mean, you said a little bit earlier that hormones will help, but they don't really get you the full way. So, so kind of talk about like why this is really needed, you know, this lifestyle component. I think we actually have to step back even a little bit further. So basically, um, a lot of people are having hormonal balances partly because of our environment. And so basically, let's talk first about women and then we can talk about men. But essentially in women, you know, they're the main hormones, but there's many hormones that actually play into this is estrogen and progesterone. And so our environment now has so many fake estrogens around called xenoestrogens. And they also happen to be endocrine disruptors that basically in Instead of things being in balance, all of a sudden we have way more estrogen load and not enough progesterone. And that sort of causes women to have a lot of cycling issues and we have receptors for estrogen and progesterone throughout the body. And so when women have way more estrogen relative to progesterone, they're moody, they're irritable, they have weight gain, and the list goes on. And you know, um, so one is, you know, you can sort of say, okay, well, I can balance your hormones by giving you more progesterone, but really what if about going the opposite direction and saying, how do we reduce all those excess estrogens? So that may be through diet. So herbicides and pesticides look like estrogen. So if we ate a little more organic, if we, um, you know, didn't eat out of plastic, uh, um, you know, containers and heat things up in the microwave and plastic, um, if we sort of detoxified more because we do use our estrogen, but if you don't have good gut bacteria, what happens is you use it and you keep reusing it mm -hmm. where you want to use it and get rid of it. So there's so many different ways to cause hormonal balance, not just about giving you hormones. So you can either take away the excess or you can improve the progesterone. But even still that estrogen progesterone balance causes a whole much uh, different problems and let's talk how does stress affect mm -hmm. our hormones well in uh, the hormone cascade it starts from cholesterol but then progesterone and progesterone makes cortisol so if you're stressed out you're gonna steal all your progesterone to make cortisol and so even if I give you progesterone and if you haven't dealt with that stress component all you're doing is you keep shoveling it down to cortisol and then you're gonna be tired wired and fat mm -hmm. so if I can get you to meditate and you know learn to say no or all these other skills then at least you know your estrogen progesterone balance will be better and if I give you progesterone you're likely to keep it there um, so that's kind of you know, one way to sort of look at uh, the estrogen progesterone balance, but also like if you're deficient on certain nutrients, then again, you're not going to make your hormones well, you're not going to metabolize them well, you know, so it's kind of, yeah, a lot of people will get better with standard hormone replacement, but, you know, if you're not addressing all those other baskets, mm -hmm. then chances are you're going to be in... Uh, the office complaining about some other problem down the road, down the so, road. or you know, something more serious, potentially like cancer and so forth. From the, correct, yeah. Right.